Hi, welcome back to another video. In the previous video, we found the tangent on a curve at a point, and it's pretty much just finding the instantaneous rate of change at that point. And we said that we can find the derivative of a function at a given point by making the h value approach to zero. So what is derivative? Well, in calculus, we use derivative to show the instantaneous rate of change at a given point. That is how much the function is changing at the given point. The notation here is essentially the mathematical translation of the sentence right here. So the limit of 2x plus h plus 1 as h approaches 0 is uh, we can write the limit as lim and we can use this arrow to indicate that h is approaching 0. So the limit of this function when h is getting closer and closer to 0, what will the function be? That's the question we're asking here. So the derivative of a function with rule f of x may be found by, so you have two steps here. I also summarized four steps for you, so we can have a look. So the first step is to find two points on the curve, because we know when using the gradient formula, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we always need two points. And the second step is to set up their coordinates, and we've seen this in the previous video. The third step is to calculate the gradient and simplify your answer. And last but not least, we want to find the limit as h approaches 0. Right, so here's an example. Consider the function f of x is equal to x cubed. By first finding the gradient of the second through p through 8 and point q, find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the point through 8. So we want to find the tangent to the curve at point p. Okay, because 2, 8 is the coordinate for p. And I sketched the graph, as you can see, it's a cubic function. So let's label the points. Point p is 2, 8, so um, x value is 2, the corresponding y value, the output, is 8. So this is our point p. Now let's plot point q. Although we don't know where h is, but we know that q is a point that's to the right of p, because 2 plus h is greater than 2, and also we want the two points to be as close as possible because we're finding the gradient of the tangent line here. So this is just um instantaneous rate of change, right? Okay, so where is point q? q is probably very close to p. Well, you probably can't even see the difference here because they're very close, but that's the idea. So if the x value for p is 2, the x value for q is going to be 2 plus h with h being the difference between the two x values. The corresponding y value is going to be, so if we sub in 2 plus h into this function, becomes 2 plus h cubed. So the corresponding y value when x is equal to 2 plus h is going to be 2 plus h, this whole thing cubed. And this point is point q. So maybe let me label the coordinates for point p we have 2, 8, so that's given to us in the question. And point Q has coordinates 2 plus H and 2 plus H cubed. All right, now find the gradient of the tangent to the curve. That means if we draw a straight line that passes through these two points, what's the gradient of that straight line? Okay, so let the gradient be M. The gradient is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2 is 2 plus h cubed, y1 is simply 8. x2 is 2 plus h, and x1 is 2. And since we have 2 plus h cubed, I can split this into 2 plus h squared times another 2 plus h, okay, minus 8. Over, and I know I have plus 2 minus 2, that's gone, and I'm left with h only. Now let's expand the first um, perfect square. So this is going to be 4 plus um, 4h plus h squared times 2 plus h minus 8. Okay, expanding the brackets, we need to make sure that every term in the first bracket is going to multiply with every term in the second bracket. Okay, so like that. And 4h will multiply through 2 and h as well. And so does h squared. Um, so 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times h is 4h, and 4h times 2 is 8h, and 4h times h is 4h. 
for h squared plus two h squared plus h cubed minus eight and everything over h. So let me continue up here. Plus eight minus eight, that's gone. And collecting like terms, four h plus eight h is 12 h. And four h squared plus three h squared becomes six h squared plus h cubed, everything over h. Now, since h is a common factor, we can simplify this expression. h divided by h is one, that becomes one h squared divided by h is um, 1h, and h cubed divided by h becomes h squared. So this can be rewritten as 12 plus 6h plus h squared. So this expression is essentially the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point P. And once we find the gradient, we say that um, as h is getting closer and closer to zero, the two points P, Q are getting closer and closer as well, all right? And we know that the closer the two points are, the more accurate the estimation is going to be. And that's just the whole idea behind instantaneous rate of change, right? So as H goes to zero, that goes to zero, that goes to zero, we are left with 12 only. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point P is 12. All right, before we move on, there's one thing I want to clarify. Here we can only say that h is approaching zero, h is getting closer to zero, or h goes to zero, but we never say that h is equal to zero um, because we're not setting h to be a fixed number zero. It's not a substitution. We're talking about the gradient this function is approaching as h approaches zero. So although we sub zero into the equation, it's only the method we use. We're not saying that h is zero, we're only saying that h is approaching zero. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind. Okay, remember we just said that although we sub zero into the expressions, we're not suggesting that h is equal to zero. It is only the method we use for calculation. And by using this method, we sub zero into the expressions to find the answer when h is approaching zero. So it's approaching, it's not equal to. And now let's have a go at these questions. Okay, question A. So we want to find the limit of this function when h approaches zero. Okay, so limit when h is approaching zero. Here's our function. Remember we said every time when you see h, we are assuming that h is approaching zero. So if h approaches zero in the second term, that becomes the whole term becomes zero. And when h approaches zero, this term becomes zero. So the limit of this function when h approaches zero is actually um, just 22 x squared because this is the only term that doesn't have um, h in it. So when h approaches zero, it doesn't have any effect on this first term here. Question B, the limit of this expression when h approaches zero. So we have 3x squared h plus 2h squared over h. So if h goes to zero, that means the denominator is going to be zero. And we know the denominator cannot be zero, otherwise it'll be undefined. So let's try simplify this um, expression first. So h is a common factor. So if I divide h here, um, gives me one. And if I divide h here, gives me one. h squared divided by h is simply h. And now the expression becomes 3x squared plus 2h. And then as h approaches zero, we are left with 3x squared only because there is no h in this term. Okay, question C. The limit of 3x when h approaches zero. Uh, this is going to be 3x. Okay, we know this straight away because there's no, there's no term that contains h in it. So the limit of 3x when h approaches zero is simply 3x. Question D. The limit of um, 4 when h approaches 0. This is interesting. Uh, the limit of 4 when h approaches 0 is going to be 4. Okay, because again, there's no term that contains h. So the limit of 4 as h approaches 0 is still going to be 4. So there are a few things we need to keep in mind. Sometimes if you have an expression that looks like this, you have h in the denominator, you need to make sure you can't set it equal to 0 because Otherwise, this expression will be undefined. So in that case, try to simplify the expression first before you let h approach zero. I hope you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.
Bye.